Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to take two of my response to community corner 25. I just m tried to record a video and it was 40 minutes long of me going into very depth detail of all my thoughts and feelings. So I kind of went through that video, typed something out. Hopefully I can get through this in a much more digestible time. <laughs> Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an announcement video where we're responding to Crowd uh, Community Corner 25. I am Silfen. I'd like to start off guys, thank to say to saying to Epic that thank you for continuing to optimize the performance of paragon they say in in the community corner that they are continuing to look at and try to optimize and they're slowly getting to optimization of uh, before i hope that it's even better um i have a very 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 good computer very good computer and it honestly should play paragon butter smooth uh, but it doesn't so please continue to work on this and thank you thank you very much also want to say that everything that I am about to say, everything that my uh, I, I I try to do on my streams, on my content, is from the bottom of my heart, and if it, it, it's meant to come from a good place, um, and I meet it out of out of respect and um, as a t to be helpful and constructive. Um, and while I do get emotional sometimes, um, I am human, and and I, j I care a lot, and I'm. I try to be as respectful and courteous as possible. So they say that they, they, they talk about the how that how they go about balancing the game. And this is the process that Epic has to go through. This is their process. When a balance, you know, when a patch goes out on Tuesday, it takes two to four days for them to collect data, a good amount of data, two to four days, two to four business days. Of, of data collection then one to two business days of testing the changes business days that's my interpretation of their verbiage one to two days of further refinement if maybe that change isn't isn't good enough they have to refine it more and then another day or two of implementing that change this could mean about seven business days seven business days of you know to to actually implement that change so on if that's a tuesday then it's the next thursday or sometimes a lot of the times it's 10 um do 10 business days so basically like basically not the next tuesday after but the tuesday after two full weeks before um b before updates and balance passes can can go down that's just simply how it is unless they you know, unless there gets like, you know, two, five, ten times more players to get more data and they're and the, you know, just the people working on Paragon increase two to three times or something like that. This is just how it's going to be. Now, they do address unstable cyborg and they do say that they are they are reducing its damage. And that's wonderful. Um, thank you very thank you, because it is. It's powerful and it's definitely getting picked a lot but they say something about the data they say that their data suggests that it's on like 0.75 percent of all of of all custom decks um and 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 stuff like that but if you are at the mmr cap uh, or mmr uh, 1600 and up which is according to agora anyways that is where i am at i am right at that i'm right at that um that that level like smack dab mid platinum so that they're talking directly about a player like myself and they say that i should see unstable styborg one in every five games and there should be one of them one of them every five games so i went back and i took a look at my eight previous pvp matches and in every single one of them there was an average of three unstable cyborgs per match, every single one. And they say that unstable cyborgs should only be on for about 30% of, uh, of the match, so like the last 30% of, of, of the 25, 30 minute match. My, my eight matches, 
ranged from from 38% of the entire match to 65% of the entire match somebody had unstable cyborg. So this means that their data is off by a factor of 20. It is 20 times what off of reality basically. Um, so m Epic, please look at your data. Please look at what it says. Uh, please look at how you interpret it because honestly something is going wrong. Um, I, I, I think that I am smack dab in exactly what you're saying your data should say and you know what it's just simply wrong. So they do talk about Quang and um, they make very good points. The first one was they tried to make Quang what he was like on Legacy just like on Monolith. So what what he was playing like, what he felt like on, on, on Legacy, they tried to make that feel and, and, and perform just like on Monolith. Basically, guys, it was, it, was, it was easier to hit on Legacy due to slower movement speed. Now, he's not a click and it, and it happens hero, right? It's not a click and it happens like a Chimera. He's kind of supposed to, you click your button, he leaps on the target, you click your alt. It's kind of meant to happen. That's kind of the checkmate sort of thing that MMO, that, that, um, that MMOs, wow, <laughs> that MOBAs are meant. There is a sort of, 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 of rock, paper, scissors, right? There's some sort of that nature. He's not that sort of click and it happens hero. And he shouldn't be, in my opinion, if we want to be competitive, if we want a high skill cap that really keeps people, um, you know, invested and trying to get better. He really shouldn't be. And he needs to be changed back. Um, the, the tether radius, uh, he, it wasn't this easy to land his tether back on, on Legacy. It simply wasn't. People could still change directions. I feel like pretty much same as, just as fast. So his tether really in my opinion wasn't um wasn't this easy to land they also go to say that his tether radius being increased is kind of not really a buff as while the radius is bigger that means that people can move around in that in in his in his tether circle more but not really a player is not going to get tethered go heading in one direction presumably in a safe direction and then turn back and go the opposite direction. So to increase a circle from this to this and consider the, dis the change in the radius is very, very small. So in my opinion, the, the, making the argument that his tether radius uh, is kind of not really a buff is a moot point. They also kind of met, they also kind of talk about that they're not really sure why Kwong's buff made his win rate go up in all MMRs um, because they were like, you know, the less skilled players, lower MMRs, maybe they would not have been hitting it, but now they are. And in high, high ELOs, they aren't, they weren't hitting it, but then they were. But even if on the fringe cases, it's still simply easier to land. And I've definitely noticed that you can get a lot more people tethered in his in his in 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 the sword so that is a huge but it's a facilitator of a lot of other things whereas you would you know whether you tethered somebody or not is a huge difference because if you didn't tether them they didn't get the damage from the sword damage from light of the heavens maybe he ulted in on them maybe the rest of his team followed up maybe before it was only supposed to be on one hero but now because of the larger radius it's on two heroes which leads to a whole it was leads to a whole snowball effect of an inhibitor down of a uh, like there's so much more so it kind of it's really obvious at least to me why even in the higher mmr that still made an effect because it just has such a big effect now at one point they talk about how they get polar opposite feedback and it's really hard to deal with um, with that as a balanced team now this polar opposite feedback was one person was saying that they want more tank cards in order to deal with all these other tanks dealing tons of damage and the other person 
says that you just need to have tanks and a support to win. It's not actually opposite at all, in my opinion, because that is direct evidence of the issue. And I, that, and that is, is that more tankiness equals more damage because there's so much power on these cards as you can remain alive to deal that extra damage. Also, because I'm in Stable Cyborg, and because you want that more tankiness that equals more damage in order to deal with the more tankiness that other people are trying to do the same to you. So you can see that it's a negative feedback loop. More tankiness equals more damage. More damage equals, in order to do that more damage, you need more tankiness, and etc. etc. And it just kind of keeps on going. And that's why. It's because tanks deal too much damage on stable cyborg, just with the rest of the power on the stuff, that is the problem. They also go on to talk about the philosophy be behind um, offense and defense. They say that the game needs to be slightly balanced towards offense because it's a creationary playstyle that is fun and defensive, and but defensive stats and a defensive playstyle is reactionary. Defensive is a reactionary and stagnant sort of ga gameplay. I disagree. Both are equally necessary to the gameplay and player experience. This naturally, if we're going to slightly emphasize offense, like offense, this naturally degrades naturally defensive team roles. Also, but rule, but rule of change, one should always go offensive. Uh, oh, sorry. Also. By rule of chance, one should always go offensive to win via chance in the long run. So if going offensive is is, is going is, is to be A, more fun, but also is going to help me win more often, why should always go offensive? So not only is a defensive and natural part of what makes MOBA MOBA and that it needs to be just as important and just as as gameplay impacting, it also needs to help people win the game. They say that no, that there's no data that says tanks dominate the game. So I therefore wonder who is a tank in their classification. Um, part of the issue is that everyone can become a tank. So there's kind of no relative to that baseline person who is that tank which is why that data probably says that they're that that the, you know this doesn't exist the tanks don't dominate the game since everybody's a tank there's no exception exceptional tank they say that a tank shouldn't be able to 1v4 someone and survive but issue is that some may be able to kill one of the four some tanks may be able to kill one of the four and deal 30 percent of the rest of the people's health and damage before they die they just can in my experience a kwong uh, you know it does his combo on 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 the carry and then the rest of the team kind of goes on him unstable cyborg takes 30 percent of their health before the kwong dies that shouldn't be besides that a tank is supposed to be able to absorb two to three people's worth of damage. That's, that is what a tank is. It, it, in, in, in my understanding of a tank in, you know, in just general, that is what a tank is. They say that the game has to be balanced as if you were fighting a 1v1. Because if they were, if, if they were to balance it as a 1v3, then when you're a 1v1, like as a tank, then that one person can't do anything because you're balanced 1v3 so that one person can't do anything. I think that's kind of the point of a tank, to be an unstoppable force that one person can't deal with. The fundamental thinking behind or philosophy of, that is what philosophy is, a tank is very different from what is stated in Community Corner 25. Like, that is what a tank is. They're supposed to be almost this unstoppable force that, yes, can't kill b people. Basically, they can't kill people, but boy, can they absorb, absorb damage. Now, the last point here is that 
KL wonders how many people are trying to break the meta or break the status quo. Um, I get the feeling like he's like 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 what's being said is that the people aren't necessarily doing that. Now it's not ultimately up to the players to set the meta. A meta is based on the fundamental mechanics of the game, or kind of in other words, like the tools that are best to use. The tools. Uh, not the humans, but the tools that we have to work with. It's the most effective tactics available. If something were better, if some tools in the system, if some cards or gems in the system or heroes were better, then, or, or there's something to counter it that would be more effective, then it would be the meta. But that's not what meta is simply by definition, right? Metas follow the ebb and flow of balance passes. Since balancing is never perfect, we strive to be, but it's never perfect. It, that meta is where that slight edge is in chance and, and, and in unbalance. And that is where the meta is. Always on the bleeding edge of balance. Um, and that's the, the, that's just what the meta is so um you know pe people test things out and that's just kind of how the how metas are also the gameplay right now is not very rewarding and that doesn't kind of really help with um help with people wanting to experiment there isn't much fundamental satisfaction with being tanky dealing a ton of damage and just getting in people's faces and winning um you know you want to do a lot of damage? Well, then you should be fragile. You don't want to deal a da you, you want to be very tanky? Well, then you can't do a lot of damage. That is the teeter-totter of, of, of what it is and how that damage is, is, is applied, changes on your role, and if you want to be um, super tanky and not take damage, well, then you need to g give up other things. So There you guys go. Um, I boiled that down a ton. Uh, maybe this video is super long as well, but um, I hope some of that made sense. I hope some of that um, give, gives some good thinking. Um, please, please, please leave your constructive criticism in, in, in the comments. Get some good thoughts um, uh, um, down there and just kind of try to help discussion and ways of thinking come into here and just kind of get some new insights because that's really all that we can ask. So there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share it with the community, and of course, guys, subscribe. If you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, please subscribe so we can do it for you in the future. Until next time, like always, guys, stay optimistic and positive.